Hi, good morning. This is Scrap and Lizzie from the Scrap and Lizzie Unicorn Group. Um, I'm here this morning with my sewing machine. I carried my sewing machine in here into my into my room. Usually I have it in the sewing room, but it's easier to move my sewing machine in here into my craft room than moving my camera into the sewing room. So, but I wanted to show you a little about um, what I'm doing here. I'm making snippet rolls, but my snippet rolls, let me see if I can move this out just a little bit. Well, that's in, that's as out as it'll go. Okay. And here, that might be better. Okay. Um, I'm making a snippet roll, but the snippet rolls that I'm making are going to be turned into journal wraps. And we're always looking for closures, different closures for journals. This is a journal I received as a gift and it's got beautiful, um, it's got beautiful ties on it already. See, now, and this is the general size of, of journals that we make. This is the general size because what this is, is the pages are eight and a half by 11 folded in half and then with a cover put on it. And so, and you can put any kind of a cover, you can put any kind of a closure, you can, so many different things. But I have found that I just loved the idea of putting this, this wrap on a journal. I did a little, um, I did a little video yesterday where I was kind of showing this. This here is a journal wrap for a small journal. And it's actually, when I first made it, I made it to go, I measured the around of this, the around like this. So it would meet like this, and then with the strings, the ribbons, to tie it in a bow in the front. But then I thought, oh, wow, it fits perfect this way, you know, up and down, and then tied like a package, crossed over the back, tied like a package, and put in the front. And so I said, well, I want to make some of those because I want to put them in my in my um and I want to put some of those in my um cigar boxes that I offer. You know what I forgot? I forgot my stick. You gotta have a stick. Just a minute I'm gonna go get my stick. Hang on. Don't leave. Don't leave. I'm getting my stick. Okay, I got my stick. Okay, this is my stick. Here's my stick. Gotta have a stick. This is a chopstick. Now, these are very important to have a chopstick on the red. Oh, I didn't plug the sewing machine in. Oh, hang on again. If any of you know what kind of a camera I can get that's got a pause on it, boy, you let me know because I can't pause this camera that I use. It's not got any pause on it. So I'm telling you, I need a life pause. Hang on. I'm just going to go around here, this around here, and then just right here. And then I'm getting this. And then I got my cord. Where'd my cord go? This is my this. Oh, I got so much um, things in my way. And, and I thought I threw this cord back here so that I could plug it in. And now, oh, I know you've all gone by now. Maybe I'll just start this whole thing over. Where did I put the cord? No, that's the cord for that. Yeah, I'll have to start this over. Where is the cord? Where is the cord? Goes from there to here, from here to here, there. There's the cord. Holy smokes. I'm telling you. You know what? I used to be 40 years younger. 
40 years ago, I was 40. Okay, now it's plugged in. 40 years ago, I was 40 years younger. Okay. There, I think I got all my ducks in a row now. Holy smokes. Okay. There, it's plugged in. But now here is, well, look at this one. Look at this snippet roll. Look how it is. Now, see, my snippet rolls in the past have been like this. Now, I'll still make this kind of snippet rolls where they're pretty much flat. Where they're flat. Okay. But this snippet roll that I just made this one this morning, I don't have any buttons on it or anything yet, so I still have more to go. But as you can see, this one's not flat. This one's not flat. This one is ruffled and scruffled and and beautiful. I'm going to show you how I did that. I learned, you know what? It was by pure tide accident. Pure tide accident that I, um, that I even come on this thing. Okay, look. See, here's one. I've put buttons on this one. I've put the buttons. I've added buttons. And I add buttons or charms. And each one of these buttons are backed with a little flower of some kind. Each button. Backed with a little flower. Those I put on by hand. Everything else has been sewed by sewing machine. But, um, and it's beautiful. And so what I'm thinking is, now if we take a journal that is of this size, and I measure around like this, then I come up with about, let me measure that, about, 14 inches. So, what I did on this particular one, now, okay, so let's put that over here out the way. Now, so on this other one here, I measured it to fit this, this um, envelope book, which is smaller, and then I added the ribbon on each side and actually this one I don't have any buttons or anything on it I'm going to add to it I'm going to put some buttons and stuff on it and probably put a button or a flower on each end here on each end so that it goes around but see so you measure the length of your snippet roll I know you can't hardly see um, measure the length you need your snippet roll to be your journal wrap and you cut your snippet roll then to that size and then add ribbon. You can use just ribbon or you can use whatever you want to tie with. And I use, because the snippet roll is a bunch of scraps of fabrics and laces and things, I um, used a strip of torn fabric. If you take your fabric, especially fabric that's this, it's like a batik and so it has the same color on both sides and you just rip them into strips i like those ribbons myself but a satin ribbon would be pretty true and so but i want to show you how i did this now you gotta have you gotta have a chopstick or a stick of some kind of orange stick or something and then a, your piece of fabric now this is the length of my fabric and of course just go ahead and make a long length you know a long length because you're going to just cut off what you need when you need it so and this one is two inches wide i think this one's two and a half inches wide but now i this is going to be the bottom or the inside so i'm gonna flip it over and i'm gonna add everything to this side because see we won't see this side anyway you won't see that once it's covered up with all your beauty so so we'll leave it to the outside so that the inside of the wrap will be still pretty. But you don't have to have pretty. You can use just whatever, whatever. What did I do with my coffee? Let me carry it in here. Just a minute. Let me get a little drink here. Mm. Just a minute. I got this little bottle of, of flavored water. 
I have to have me a little drink. Once I start running my mouth, you know. Gosh. Okay, now just a minute. Okay, I have this tub. This tub is nothing but a bunch of scrap fabrics. I can't get the tub any closer than that. Scraps, little scraps. There's scraps of fabric. There's scraps of lace. There's just a bunch of little scraps in there. Um, I got some from Deborah. 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 Can't think of her last name right now. I got some from Joy. And just scraps. Just scraps. You don't need anything fancy schmancy. Just scraps. And, um... And I just mix them all together, and that's what I put on there. This is all fabric. It's going to be all fabric except for the embellishments at the end that I'll put on buttons and bows and whatever. But whatever you have. Now, this one here, like this one. This one here has got, like, pieces of rickrack. It's got some yarn. This one I didn't make. This one was made by a friend. But um, it's got so many really pretty things. And this is one way you can do it. You can see a lot of the fabric that you started with. She started with muslin. And um, you can see a lot of that. Well, on this, you're not going to see any of that anymore. Boy, I cover that stuff up. And so I just get me a... I'm just going to pull me out a handful of, of pieces here. A handful of scraps out of my bucket. And so it does not matter what, what you have the colors now if you were going to go with if you wanted to have say a um shabby chic you might want to stick with all just light color start with a light color backing um light colors light laces and everything to make it a shabby chic but now i accidentally come on this because i don't want to, i have sewed my finger in the past i sewed my finger once I got the needle right through my index finger. When it hit the bone, it broke. So I had to go to the ER and they had to, they x-rayed my finger and they saw three pieces of needle in my um, finger. And so they had to open up my finger and get those sh shards of needle out of there. I had three pieces in there. That did not feel good at all. That was a long time ago, though, but I learned. Now, see, now what I do, I use my chopstick or an orange stick or something like this, but I use wood because then if the needle hits it, it's not going to break your needle. If you use like a pokey tool or something, if the needle hits it, you may break your needle. So I use the chopstick. But then what I do is, where's my foot pedal? Oh, there it is. Right there under my foot. Okay. Whoops. <laughs> Now, see what I'm doing here? I'm going to shove it. I'm shoving. Now, I kind of hold onto the fabric with my thumb here so it doesn't get all um, crinkled. But see, I kind of just um, shove it under the presser foot just as I'm stitching, and it gathers it up. See how that does? And so... That's what it does. And so, and I usually end up having to go, oh, maybe three swipes down with different, um, with different fabrics. But, and then I just have them all, all, all just, look, this has got a longer little piece of lace in there. So, but lace, fabric, whatever, just, and then shove it under there. Just keep shoving with your wooden stick, with your Chinese chopstick. Okay. I got, oh, I see that my lace got hung up in the presser. For, I knew there was something going on. Let me get that out of there. Get out of there, Mr. Lace. Oh, see, and sometimes this is so cool because... Sometimes if you, where's this? Oh, there it is. Sometimes if you do get a little piece, sometimes you got to watch your lace because 
if it's too lacy it wants to get hung up in the presser foot so I'm just going to cut it instead of trying to cut it so it's not hung up in the presser foot okay now still caught up okay that's okay though we don't mind we are not going to lose any sleep over that and then just keep shoving that under there just keep shoving it under you can do the whole thing with lace different kind of laces look at this little ladybug fabric that fabric i had left over from aprons i made for my granddaughter when she was working in a little restaurant store thing years ago now see most people when they well i shouldn't say most people because we're talking about us scrapping people. but a lot of people if they sew a lot there's a lot they throw away and like this look at that little piece right there huh. heck no buddy don't throw that sucker away just shove it under the presser foot look at this and then we just keep on going and all the different colors and um i love this one i find See, I think I got them from Joy. That is really pretty. It looks so primitive. Um, yeah, a lot of people would just probably throw these things away. Oh, no, 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 buddy. I don't. So if you've got a bag full of these scraps and you don't want to make snippet rolls and, and you have scraps, just send me your scraps. I'll take them. I'll take them because I'm going to probably use up these here scraps pretty quickly. And, um... But so we just keep going, just keep going, and um, and look at this. I've got so many scraps in here, so many different scraps that um, and I've got a lot of fabric. I'm not saying I don't have fabric because I do, but a lot of my you know, I just don't want to take a real beautiful piece of fabric and then just chop it into pieces. But like yesterday, St Stacy had a um, had an auction, and in her auction she had a bag full of just little squares, just little squares of fabric. And boy, I bid on that one. I said I want that one, and because they were just all different fabrics, everything different, prints different, everything. And I said, oh, how perfect that's going to be. And they were already small pieces. I might have to make them into a little bit smaller pieces. I don't know. I'll have to wait till I see them. I can't hardly wait till I get them in my hot little hand. So there I went down one side. And um, I went down that one side. And see how that looks? That's just one side of it done. Now... I want to go down the opposite side. So I'm going to go this way. And then I'm going to just start by putting, I'm going to put that piece of lace on there. I'll put it there so that piece shows. And where's my chopstick? Use your chopstick. Don't be sewing your fingers because that hurts. Who does that hurt? I was making, at the time, I remember, I was making a gopher bag for an award for um, a girl that w I was working with, well, working with, I was Girl Scouting, we were, I was Girl Scout leader, and we were having a day camp, and so, and, but this one, Mary Lou girl, Mary Lou, God, this was a long time ago, she was the gopher so um so if anybody needed something all of a sudden she was the one that would jump in her car and go get it for us and so she was the gopher so her award i was making her a gopher bag and here in florida we call um we have some turtles i don't know what they're turtles but we call them gophers because i don't i don't know why maybe they really are gopher turtles but they're not like a gopher but i was appliquing with the machine a turtle gopher turtle onto this bag 
And that's when I, um, when I was doing it the night before our awards. And so I was hurrying, trying to get that thing done. And so then after I sewed my finger, I had my finger in a gallon jug of ice water to, um, because it hurts so bad. And I figured, well, when the hubster gets home from work, he can just pull that needle, because the rest of the needle is still sticking out, out of my finger. You know, I just unhooked it from, un, unhooked it from the machine, and I just sat there, waited for him to come home with my fing whole hand in the ice water. And so, and at that time, I could have been busy getting this gopher bag done. And so... He took me to the ER, you know, he pulled, he pulled it out. I said, I don't care how bad it hurts, just get the pliers and pull it out. And so he did. And then that's when we realized that there was only a piece of a needle and there was no, no evidence that it, um, came out the other side of my finger. So he says, nope, we got to go get that looked at. And that's when, you know, they had to... <sighs> Waste my time taking it out of there, but boy, did it hurt. And um, and so then when I got home with my finger all bandaged up, I fi finished. I had to get it finished. I had to get that thing finished because um, I needed it for the next day. So I got that finished. All these little bitty pieces, I got them from Deborah. She sent me... I can't think of her last name. I hope her name is Deborah, but she's she lives here in Florida. I think Bradenton, and um, she sent me a whole bag full, a whole IKEA seat. That was exciting too. I didn't know that IKEA made Ziploc bags, but they do. She sent me a whole IKEA bag full of um, full of those little pieces. Man, that was like getting. That was like getting a bowl of ice cream. It was amazing. I was so excited. And um, so, oh, look at that. That's like a sheer piece. And so, but anything, you know, you're just, you don't even put no thought into it. Just sheer, just sheer, just anything you have. Just put it in there. Just stick that sucker in there. And get that, um... But see, what I'm doing is I'm shoving it under the presser foot using my um, using my chopstick, and and it is so pretty. Cause look at see how it just kind of gathers it up, just crinkles it up, gets it all wrinkled, and it doesn't matter what size you use. Just, I mean, of course you don't want it too too big, but. Um, just get it under there and just don't sew your finger. That's the only thing. That's the only rule is don't sew your finger. And then you've got a, um, oh, my, my stick. I lost my stick. And then you can go with anything. Let me see. Oh, yep, I still got plenty of bobbin. So now I've went down to two sides. I want to go down the middle now. So I'm going to go down the middle, and that might still not be enough. I don't know. You know what I'm going to do? I think I might. I want to cover. I want to make sure that my whole thingy is covered. I want that fabric all covered. I might have to go again. I might have to go even again. You never know. You never know. If you have to go again, you have to make that decision. Once you, um, look at, there's a piece of black already ruffled. So see, anything you have a scrap of, you put that in there. Just put that in there and get that under that needle and sew it on. And, oh, I don't have my fan on. And so we just get that going. And um, see, I got even black. Let's see, when I'm finished with the sewing machine part of it, um, when I'm finished with the sewing machine part of it, then I, while sitting there watching TV or something, I don't do much of that, but I can 
and just sew the buttons and the charms or whatever I decide that I want to sew on. But by putting them in and crinkling them up like that, just crinkling them, see, then ouch. Don't put your finger under the presser foot either. I that was just a pretty piece of lace, so I didn't crinkle it. Um, but what a way to use up fabric scraps. And if you can get a hold of um, somebody else's fabric scraps because they don't want them, oh, you think them and hug them and well, you don't have to kiss them because we got to be careful of the germs now. Like we didn't have to be careful of germs before, but now we have to be careful of germs. So, um, so we are going to just be careful of germs. Okay, now anyway, wait a minute, why are we hung up here? Okay, I see. We're, we're good. But see, now if you're sewing a um, garment, you got to be so careful to have the stitches going exactly straight and all that stuff. Oh man, you don't have to have that. You don't have that problem with this. With this, you do not have that problem. You do not have that problem at all. And see, so I just keep picking up another piece and shoving it under there. Just shove it. Just wad it up underneath there. Just wad it. It just just wad it up there. That's all you need. Just wad it up. A little piece of a lace doily there. There we go. And um just get it wadded up and stuff it under there. Stuff it under there. If it's folded, no big hairy deal. Just there's a piece of eyelet lace. That's pretty. Stuff it under there. Just stuff it. See, that's all we're doing is stuffing it. Just stuff it under there with your stick. Don't worry about getting it flat. This, oh, look at this piece. <gasps> oh, man, that one almost makes you hyperventilate. That's pretty. Well, maybe because it's purple. Oh, wait a minute here. I shove that under there. There we go. I'm going to make sure our shoving does well. And... Put just one more piece here. Okay, now I've went three runs down this piece. This piece that I um just did is let me see how long it is. Let's see, that is 14, 28, and 32 inches is how long I made this one. But then, see, you'll have it made, and then you'll be able to, um, you'll have it made, and then you cut off how much you need. So that is the the um, value of a snippet roll. You know what I'm going to do here? I've got a piece of this. I have a piece of this rickrack that is like um various colors it's just variegated all kind of pastel colors i'm going to take that and i am going to now i'm not going to gather this up i'm just going to i'm just going to continually zigzag it down See how that works. I think that'll go pretty cool. Okay, and then I'll just go. I love Rick Rick. I just love Rick. But you know, this stuff's expensive. This one here, I actually bought this. I can't believe I paid money for it, but I thought it was so pretty. And so I had to buy it. And, um, so that's why I have to be kept out of 
Joanne fabrics and stuff because I see stuff that's pretty and I think I have to have it. And then um, wonder why I haven't been groceries in the cupboard. No, not really. I never went out groceries. Not me. You can tell by looking at me. Although you guys, oh, you are, and I'm not, and I am not one bit kidding. I'm watching my diet really well right now, and it's to keep my sugar numbers down because for some reason my doctor thinks I need to be on insulin shots, and I don't like them. So, but I know I can get off of them again if I can get my numbers right. And so that's what I'm working on is getting my numbers right. And, but as a perk, I have lost 12 pounds in about that many days since I've been on the insulin shots and watching what I ate. I have not had a cookie. I have not had ice cream. I have not had cake. I have not had candy. I am just doing good. You know, it's amazing because I don't even want it. And usually I am a sweet freak. I love sweets. And oh, give me a bag of M&M's family size and I'll have it in a day. Yeah. Party size. Give me a party size bag. Yeah. Eight in a day, but now I know I want to live. And I lost a friend. I lost a friend. Complications. She was 44 years my best friend. Complications from diabetes. And she's now entered the world of angels. And although I do want to see her again, not today. There we go. So now I have... I put that zigzagged that all the way down. So it's all ruffled. It's all zigzagged. And that's the way I did it. And so it's just, instead of doing it flat, and, and there are a lot of things now. If you're going to do like your, you know, make pockets in your journals or something, you will want them to be flat. You don't want those to be all scrunchled up like that so you'll want those flat but if you're making a uh a book wrap then yes scrapping i mean making them um like this with all the wrinkles and fluffs now see i don't have anything right there so that's probably that's still part of that fabric i can see so i'll most likely put a flower there and, um, or maybe a yo-yo, I make yo-yos, I maybe put a yo-yo here or a flower with a button right there to cover up that little piece that I, it's not covered up with other things. But by putting that fabric upside down and sewing to the wrong side of the fabric, then the right side of the fabric is still visible on the inside of your journal wrap. And so then you will measure your journal to see how much you want around. That's how much you'll cut off and just put a ribbon on either end. You can, um, you can, <coughs> excuse me, to make it a little neater, I guess you could, you know, fold it over and, and make a little hem on there if you so choose. But if you're doing a junk journal, you want frayed edges. I do anyway. I like the frayed edges and see how that one sticks up some. That's just fine. I think it's pretty. I think it is so pretty. And that's all of your extra little tiny scraps. And like I say, if you've got a basket full of scrap fabrics that you don't want to throw away, but you don't know what to do with them, then here you go. You make you some snippet rolls because you can use them for things. And making a journal wrap is like perfect. See, I think maybe even folding it into maybe a point like this at the end. And then a point fold it into a point and stitch the put the um put the tie on here and then stitch put a button over the end of the tie wouldn't that be pretty just for the decoration a, bo a button or a piece of um jewelry piece scrap or something but journal wraps this is just amazing. And to put that around your journal, I mean, you can just put a ribbon, but you can put this. And see what, wait a minute.
I don't have no room here because this is not really where I live with this sewing machine. But see, well, you, if I move this, I can fit this up a little bit. Let me see. There, you can kind of see there my journal wrap. And, um, and like I say, I'll be putting buttons and bows and ribbons and stuff still on it. So that one is not done. I will be adding more to it. Like this one here. This one here is got less and less on it is because it's purple. I didn't do this one the same way this one I did a long time ago. And so it's different. But um, and it's and it shows the fabric, you know, on this side. But anyway, that's just what I wanted to show you. Now I gotta go put my sewing machine back in my sewing room. Put that back up on the shelf. Put these. And remember, don't try and poke them things under there with your finger. Use your stick. Use your stick. Um, a chopstick, or a, this is a skewer, actually. I'm calling it a chopstick, but it's not. It's a skewer. But if you have a chopstick, that's good. But a skewer is good because it's pointy. It's sharp kind of on the end, and you can grab hold of the... So this is a skewer. I know I was calling it a chopstick, and that's not what it is. So um, let me just read you something quickly here. And, um, and um, I'm going to read you something quickly as quick as I can find my book. I really got to search for my other book. I don't know where I put it. Okay. God, I got strings on everything. Let's see. Okay, this is self-righteous. Oh, I can't see that word. Darn it. Okay. I release all old hurts and forgive myself. We never get even, we never get even revenge. Wait a minute. Jeez. Oh, my glasses. We never get even. Revenge does not work because what you give out comes back to you. The buck has to stop somewhere. Oh, how true. I release all old hurts and I forgive myself. When you hold on to the past with bitterness and anger and don't allow yourself to experience the present moment, you are wasting today. If you hold on to the bitterness and grudges for a long time, it has to do with forgiving yourself, not the other person. If you hold on to old hurts, you punish yourself in the here and now. Often you sit in a prison of self-righteous resentment. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Forgive yourself and stop punishing yourself. Oh my gosh. That is so, oh my gosh, is that ever true? And for me right now, right now, I'm, I'm going to leave that right there because I'm going to have to read that again. I have to read that again and let it sink in. And for now, I ask, I thank you so much for coming, uh, spending part of your day right here. And, um, oops, no, I can't show you me. I can't show you my book. Um, I, um, yes, I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make, and I will see you on the next video. God bless.